Empires. Essentially groups of states have formed together under a ruler or emperor. There are well-known ones such as the Roman Empire, British, Mongol, and more. But there are also numerous ones that are scarcely talked about as well. Today, we will be going through the Empire Iceberg, where we will start with the more well-known empires and gradually talk about more and more obscure ones as we go down. Now, let's get into it. The British Empire, the largest empire by total land area the world has ever known. The framework for the empire began initially when England wanted to compete with Spain and Portugal and their expanding empires. Sending explorations to the New World in the very late 1400s that ultimately resulted in failure, they didn't do much until the tail end of the 16th century under Queen Elizabeth. Then, trailing behind Spain, Portugal, and France with its possession of New France in North America, England decided to start expanding heavily. By the 18th and 19th centuries, the British Empire was absolutely massive. Sprawling all across the globe, it held dominion over 400 million people, almost a quarter of the world's population. Notable territories being, of course, what became the United States, the Indian subcontinent, multiple African territories, and more. Later, in the mid to late 1900s, the empire began to shrink, ceding its possessions to the people of the territories they ruled over. The empire is but a fraction of the size it once was, but they still have a few colonies and territories. The sun never did set on the British Empire when it was at its height. The Roman Republic, which I assume whoever made this iceberg meant to put Roman Empire instead, was an empire from 27 BC to 395 AD as a unified empire, until 476 AD for the western half and 1453 for the Eastern half, or Byzantine Empire, which we will discuss as we get further. The Roman Empire followed the Roman Republic and is a contender with the British Empire for the most well-known empire. Rome was a massive empire as well at its height, including territories in North Africa, Europe, and Asia under the Emperor Trajan. From its tiny beginnings as a tiny city-state to its massive heights, the Roman Empire has hours upon hours of information one can learn about it. The empire explored far to all four cardinal directions and was a force to be reckoned with at its height. Hugely influential, the empire's influence can still be traced to today, with the languages many speak, to science, history, art, etc. The fall of the western half in the 400s resulted in setbacks for Europe in some regards, large portions of information being only preserved by literate and trained monks. The Roman Empire was a vast and influential empire and is still very often talked about today. Nazi Germany. From 1933 to 1945, Germany, under the rule of Adolf Hitler, was a power that was able to dominate much of Europe, from its beginnings with the takeover of the government and suspicious fires to its end shrouded in conspiracy. Essentially, everyone knows about this empire. Germany started the Second World War, the bloodiest war ever in human history, with, an, with over an estimated 40 million casualties. This version of Germany was a relatively short empire, but an undoubtedly influential and infamous one at that. The USSR, or the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, was a country spanning much of Eurasia from 1922 to 1991. The definitive communist country, it was home to over 290 million people in the late 80s. The USSR is of course best known for being the first country to be communist, and is also known for such figures as Vladimir Lenin, Joseph Stalin, Mikhail Gorbachev, and more. The USSR was the United States' biggest rival in the 20th century. After they fell, the U.S. was able to become the dominant superpower of the world. The beginnings in the Lenin era, which was the result of a bloody civil war that included the death of the former Tsar and his family, the deaths of many from famine and war and financial hardships, to the Stalin era, a brutal and deadly time that saw millions die and suffer under his dictatorship. Also, the end with the Gorbachev era. The USSR was influential over the globe, competing with America for power. The USSR conquered former Russian territories and was to be a global power slash threat that was around for 70 years. The Mongol Empire was an empire from 1206 to 1368 AD. The empire was founded by Genghis Khan in the steppes of Central Asia. The Mongols were forced to be reckoned with during their years of activity, being unstoppable at times and being able to conquer huge areas of land quickly. Their largely nomadic way of life and their reliance on horses allowed them to move and achieve victory quickly. 
Moving west across Asia and into parts of Europe, they seemed unstoppable battling European armies and winning a large portion of battles with their tactics that were unknown to Europeans at the time. They also battled Muslims in the Middle East as well, during the times of certain crusades forming alliances, albeit shaky and not the strongest, with some armies and fighting others. Marco Polo, a now famous individual, was able to travel east and enjoy the company of the great Khan Kublai. He spent years upon years working for the empire and doing work for the Khan. The empire was unable to survive the death of Kublai for long. It fragmented, and along with fighting with each other in plague, the empire was unable to sustain itself and fell. Bronze Age Egypt was an era of ancient Egypt that was of course characterized by the smelting and use of bronze. It is divided up into three main sub-eras, the Early, Middle, and Late Bronze Age. The Bronze Age and Egypt are characterized by periods of significant development. Notably, things like the pyramids are likely being built, although that is a popular debate these days with people like Graham Hancock, who claim they may not be as young as we think they are. But that is neither here nor there in regards to this video. There is a lot to be discussed with Egypt and the Bronze Age, which would take a while. The Emperor had many notable buildings, pharaohs, developments, and more. The Bronze Age came to an abrupt end and collapsed in Egypt with the invasion of the Sea Peoples, a group of people still shrouded in mystery. Now on to Tier 2, where the entries are going to get a little bit more in-depth and more interesting as we delve into empires that are not as well known as the previous ones we covered. Now, on to Sparta. Sparta was an ancient Greek city-state that came into being according to myth by the son of Zeus. It is hard to date the start of because there were people there in the Stone Age and the writing about the founding was all done after people were there for a long while. But, that being said, Sparta became the dominant land power in ancient Greece around 650 BC. Sparta was known as the rival to the dominant naval and sea power of Greece, Athens. The city-state was able to survive hundreds of years through their military might and power over lands in Greece, though it was not always the strongest, and eventually the Roman Republic took possession of it. Sparta emphasized military might as one of their top priorities, and there is a probably untrue popular idea that when a child was born with defects, it would be thrown over a cliff, but in reality, they were left to the elements to die. Also, and I'll fully go. Sparta was to survive empires coming and going and still exists as a city in Greece to this day. Yugoslavia Yugoslavia was a country in the Balkans from 1918 to 1992-2006-ish. It came following centuries of rule by the Ottoman Turks, but after World War I it became its own state of southern Slavic peoples. It is most known probably for its leader Tito, but it was also a monarchy up until the end of World War II, essentially, when the monarchy was abolished. During World War II, it was occupied by the Axis powers and did not have a ruler of its own. After that, though, Tito became the ruler of the country. Yugoslavia liberated itself from the Axis with some helps from the Soviets and Russia. Then the Russians placed spies in the country, and while they were allies for a little bit, eventually, though, after a series of skirmishes and differing politics, the two split and pursued socialism in their own ways. By the 1980s, tensions were rising in Yugoslavia and the Balkans, but Tito was dead and the country was struggling to hold itself together. The Balkans eventually descended into conflict, and what came out of it was a bunch of separate countries. The Balkan wars and conflicts could be talked about for hours upon hours. Yugoslavia became a republic after 1992, but did not survive long. In 2006, Montenegro declared its independence, formally ending the last remnants of Yugoslavia. The Austro-Hungarian Empire was an empire from 1867 to 1918. It was a monarchy where there was an emperor of Austria who was also the king of Hungary. The empire was the last of the Habsburg dynasty, the dynasty known for its infamous practice of inbreeding. The Habsburgs were first a ruling dynasty from the 1200s, 1282 to be exact. The empire, though, was the second largest in Europe during the early 1900s, second only to the Russian Empire. The Austro-Hungarian Empire formed in the aftermath of the Austro-Prussian War of the 1860s. During World War I, it was part of the Central Powers along with Germany and the Ottomans. In 1918, though, the empire was basically in ruin financially from the war and collapsed. But a couple years before that, it was in enough trouble to become a satellite of the Germans. After the war, it was split into Austria and Hungary, respectively, and the Habsburgs were banished. There ends the short-lived empire. The Kingdom of Scotland 
The Kingdom of Scotland is said to have been founded in 843 AD. Over the years, it came to share a land border with the Kingdom of England to the south. In 1603, the Kingdom joined a personal union with the Kingdom of Britain under King James VI of Scotland, who became James I of England and Ireland. In 1707, under Queen Anne, the kingdoms were officially united, forming the Kingdom of Great Britain. Fighting numerous wars with England before the unification, Scotland was a kingdom that was largely more rural than its southern counterpart. The kingdom was under the rule of different houses, such as the House of Alpin, Dunkeld, Severi, and more. England was at war with the kingdom multiple times, like under Edward I, the Normans, etc. The kingdom of Scotland is unfortunately overshadowed by Britain a lot, but is still known for people like William Wallace and the historically very inaccurate Braveheart, and Robert the Bruce. The Incan Empire was an empire from 1438 to just 1533. Beginning with Manco Capac, it covered parts of Peru, Ecuador, Chile, Colombia, Bolivia, and Argentina. At its greatest extent, it was a huge empire. The empire was unaware of the fall of the Aztec Empire to the north under Hernán Cortés, but came to experience its own fall under another Spanish conquistador, Francisco Pizarro, along with his half-brothers. The empire was sprawling and huge and even had roads going across it where pack trains of alpacas would transport goods along the highways. It had so much golden resources too and was able to build giant works and cities. Back to Pizarro though, he was a successful conquistador of his own in Central America and realized that there was a huge empire for the taking to the south. He briefly met with the Incas, then he left for Spain, got permission for conquest, gathered his brothers and some allies like Almagro. He returned and seized the emperor Atahualpa in a town square. He fired cannon into the thousands of Incas after the emperor desecrated a Bible and the Incas then fled. Over time, the Spaniards took control and installed a puppet emperor, Manco Inca, who led a siege of the city of Cusco with hundreds of thousands of Incas against a couple hundred Spaniards and a few thousand native allies. The Spaniards managed to win, though, and the Incan Empire retreated into the jungle. The empire was short-lived, but remarkably productive in a short time. It fell when the Spaniards con conquered it in 1530. I recommend the book The Last Days of the Incas by Kim McQuarrie. It's huge and unbiased and paints a vivid picture of the two empires meeting and clashing. Han China was an empire and dynasty that ruled China from 202 BC to 9 AD, then again from 25 to 220 AD. It followed the Qin Dynasty, the first dynasty of Imperial China. It came after the Qin Dynasty fell in a warring period known as the Chu Han Contention. The An Dynasty of Imperial China was founded by a former president named Liu Bang. His dynasty then became known today to start the Golden Age of Chinese history. They played a crucial role in starting the Silk Road in trade with other places in the world. The dynasty, after periods of infighting, fractured, and China was ruled by three kingdoms, and the Han Dynasty of Imperial China ended there. Now, for the last entry in Tier 2. The Byzantine Empire, or the eastern half of the Roman Empire which I mentioned earlier, formed as a halving of the Roman Empire in the 4th century that lasted until 1453 AD. The capital of the eastern half, or Byzantine Empire, was Byzantium, which later became Constantinople. The western half of the Roman Empire could be said to be more Latin and Roman influenced than the Byzantine Empire, which was decidedly more Greek. Fighting a lot of conflicts with the Saracens over the years, it defended Europe from the spread of Islam. It had many notable rulers, but the most well-known one was probably Justinian I, where the empire's military might and power was at its height, and it was able to reconquer large swaths of land. The Fourth Crusade notoriously led to the sacking of the capital city in 1204, and less than 50 years later, the empire fell to the Turks. The empire was to leave behind a large legacy, and is still felt in the southeast of Europe and the Orthodox Christian world today. Now, on to Tier 3. The Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth existed from 1569 to 1795. It was a monarchy where the king would rule both Poland as the king and Lithuania as the Grand Duke. The two had been in personal union since the 1300s though, when the Polish Jadwiga married the Lithuanian Jogaila. The empire was multi-ethnic and multilingual and multi-religious, and was one of the largest in Europe until its partitions later in its life. It also had many different forms of monarchy, too, throughout its existence, hereditary, elective, and constitutional. The empire had many wars throughout its history, too. They warred with Russia, the Swedes, the Turks, and even the Tartars. The partitions 
which I mentioned previously came in three distinct parts. The first was by Russia, Prussia, and Austria in 1772, the second by Russia and Prussia in 93, and again by all three in 95. When the empire was partitioned out of existence and the lands became parts of other states, the two countries that made up the name of the empire, Poland and Lithuania, didn't become countries again until 1918. The Archimanid, or the Persian Empire, was an ancient Iranian empire. It was the first empire that was Persian that was able to rule over large areas of Greater Persia or Iran. It existed from 550 BC to 330 BC and was founded by Cyrus the Great. At its height, the empire was one of the biggest in history, stretching from modern-day Turkey to the west, the Indus Valley to the east, Egypt to the south, and the Black Sea to the north. The empire can be described as a combination when it comes to their culture. It included Persian, Egyptian, Mesopotamian culture, and more. The religion, Zoroastrianism, was big in the empire. Founded by Zoroaster, it is one of the oldest organized religions and still has followers today. It could have its own video describing it, and it does have them on YouTube for multiple different channels, which I recommend checking out. The Persian Empire fell to Alexander the Great in 331 BC when he was conquering basically the whole known world at that point, and the empire ceased to exist just a year later. The Kingdom of Judea, which I take to mean the Kingdom of Judah in the region of Judea, was a kingdom that existed from the 10th century BC to the 6th century BC. It came out of the Kingdom of Israel formed by King David and then King Solomon when that kingdom divided up. When the split happened, the Kingdom of Israel remained to the north and Judah was to the south. It had wars with its neighbors like the Babylonians and the Assyrians. In 586 BC, the king Nebuchadnezzar II captured Jerusalem and destroyed the first temple. That led to the destruction of the kingdom and a lot of the Judahites fled to the north. There the kingdom ends, but it remains an important part of history because once Cyrus the Great, who I mentioned in the previous entry, conquered that area, the Judahites returned to that area. And there they lived. Carthage was an empire that started in the north of Africa initially as a colony, then evolving into a city-state, and then into a huge empire. The city was founded by the Phoenicians in the 9th century BC. By the 4th century BC, it was at its height, ruled by Punic peoples rivaling Rome. Having wars with the Greeks, the Sicilians, and of course the Romans, it was known for figures like Hannibal Barca, who as you all likely know, had elephants and crossed the Alps. He was most famous for the Second Punic War, but by the Third Punic War, from 149 to 146 BC though, Carthage was thoroughly defeated and the city was destroyed, ending the once great empire. The city of Carthage is now part of modern day Tunisia. It had big impacts on Roman culture, which in turn then had big impacts on a lot of Western culture. Carthage in its day was a huge trading power. Edo era Japan was an era of Japan also known as the Tokugawa period from 1603 to 1868. Japan was under the rule of the Tokugawa shogunate at that period of course. Following a battle, the Battle of Sekigahara, the shogunate consolidated power and formed a military dictatorship. The samurai were at the top of the social order, followed by peasants, farmers, artisans, etc. Of course above the samurai, as a figurehead was the emperor. During this period, it was a period of isolation, not trading with outside nations besides a little with China and Korea, and from Europe, a small amount from the Netherlands and Portugal. Also during the era, the shogunate killed Catholic and other Christian converts, missionaries, and priests due to a fear of security concerns. The era ended when American Commodore Matthew Perry forced J Japan to open trade with the outside world. In 1868, the Tokugawa shogunate fell and the Emperor Meiji was restored to power, marking Japan's turn towards modernization. Yuan China, we kind of touched on when we talked about the Mongol Empire, but Yuan China was established by Kublai Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan in 1271. Marco Polo visited China during this period. Yuan China was the only non-Han Chinese dynasty to ever rule China. The Mongols ruled this area of China essentially as foreign elites. Confucianism was the majority religion, but other religions were also there at the time, like Buddhism, some Islam, and some Christianity in the form of Nestorian Christianity, aka Assyrian Christianity. The Silk Road flourished at this time, allowing trade with faraway lands in the Middle East and Europe. As mentioned previously, when Kublai died, there was infighting and other stuff like rebellion in China and the dynasty collapsed in 1368. 
and China was to be ruled by the Ming Dynasty. Now, onto the last entry of Tier 3. The Olmec Civilization was an ancient Mexican civilization from 1400 to 400 BC in primarily Veracruz and Tabasco. They are considered the mother civilization in Mexico, having likely built the first cities in the area and having influences on later civilizations like the Aztec and Maya. They are known for their giant head sculptures that potentially represent rulers or even possibly deities. Like many New World pre-Columbian religions, they likely practiced some type of animism where natural and living things held high significance. Their trade was also widespread and expansive in Mesoamerica, with traces being found all over the place. Ruled likely by a king and cultivating many crops, the Olmec ultimately disappeared and the civilization collapsed. Though no one is certain why, they likely disappeared due to a variety of factors like fighting, wars, lack of food, etc. Now, starting Tier 4 with the Zulu Empire. The Zulu Empire, or Zulu Kingdom, emerged in South Africa in the early 19th century under Shaka Zulu. Under Shaka and his military reforms, he was able to make them dominant against other African tribes and kingdoms. Shaka was assassinated by his brothers in 1828, and eventually a half-brother in Pande was able to bring relative stability to the Zulu. Tensions with the Anglos and the Boers led to the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879. The British were to win the war and divided the kingdom into smaller and easier to control areas. The influence of the Zulu in South Africa still is apparent today, and the Zulu people are one of the largest ethnic groups in South Africa. The Kievan Rus was a medieval Slavic state that came about in the 9th century, founded by the Varangian, or the Viking, Rurik. It lasted until the Mongol invasions of the 1200s. Centered around Kiev and Ukraine, it included huge areas of modern-day Russia and Belarus too. In 988 AD, Prince Vladimir the Great adopted Orthodox Christianity from the Byzantines. At its height, it was a great power in Eastern Europe with vast networks of trade and commerce. Once the Mongols invaded, a lot of devastation happened and the Mongols were able to conquer that territory. Though it fell, it was able to lay the groundwork for the state of Muscovy, which became Russia and also laid the works for Ukraine and Belarus. The influence is still felt today, especially with things like the Eastern Orthodox religion still being really prevalent in Eastern Europe. The Umayyad Caliphate was the second Islamic Caliphate following the Rashidun Caliphate. The Umayyad Caliphate lasted from 661 to 750 AD, founded by Caliph Mawaya I. He set its capital in Damascus, Syria, and formed the highly centralized government around that. It was able to conquer huge areas of land, reaching all the way into France in some parts. The non-Arab Muslims of the empire often faced discrimination as well as the Arabs were at the top of the social ladder. They pushed the Arab language onto the subjects of the empire, and it became the dominant language of the empire soon after that. After a while, infighting or revolts became relatively common, and it also faced numerous threats from the borders, with the Byzantines protecting Europe from large-scale Arab invasions on the eastern portion of the empire. After a rebellion, the Umayyads were all hunted down and killed, and the empire under that name fell. Eventually, the Muslims were pushed out of the west of Europe by the Spaniards and the Reconquista. The Iroquois Confederation was a decentralized conglomeration of five and later six Iroquois-speaking nations that formed together. Formed in the late 16th or early 17th century to promote things among its members like peace, trade, and also defense, the government of each nation would send chiefs to represent the tribes they were part of. Decision making was made with the input of all the chiefs. They formed alliances with other American Indian tribes at times and even also with the French and English periods too. They also worked with the colonists becoming involved in things like the fur trade and more. The empire included the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Seneca. Later, a sixth nation, the Tuscarora, joined them as well. They still have land claims today, though their nation is nowhere near the size it once was. The Iberian Union was a union between the two Iberian countries of Spain and Portugal from 1580 to 1640. The two kingdoms were joined under a single ruler, the first one being King Philip II of Spain and the first of Portugal. Sharing the same monarch, they were a personal union, being separate distinct political entities and states, but just being ruled by each the same king. The union was not without tension though, as the smaller country, Portugal, had people resistant to Spanish language and influence, wanting to preserve their own distinct culture. 
Philip III of Spain and second of Portugal was the second king of the Union, and the third of the Union was Philip IV of Spain and the third of Portugal. The Union came to an end after a war, and Portugal was freed and was then ruled by John IV. Florence. The Florentine Republic, not necessarily an empire, was a republic in what is now modern-day Italy. It was established in the 12th century and was centered around the city of Florence, which is in Tuscany. The city was a trading center for Europe and was ruled by oligarchies and shifting factions. Notable people like Leonardo da Vinci, Dante Alighieri, the man who wrote the Divine Comedy, and Machiavelli, just to name a few. The city, a few centuries after its founding, became the cultural center of the Renaissance and was to influence the rest of Europe for centuries to come. Fighting with other Italian states and others and being ruled by powerful factions over its history, it eventually fell and turned into the Duchy of Florence after being under pressure from the Papal States and Spain being ruled by the Medici still though. The city is still a relevant city in Italy to this day, though not a republic anymore being under a unified Italy. The Maria Empire was an ancient Indian empire that existed from around 320 BC until around 185 BC. It was founded by Chandragupta Maurya when the overthrowing of the Nanda dynasty occurred. At its height, the Maurya Empire covered a vast area of the Indian subcontinent, including present-day India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and even parts of Afghanistan and Nepal. The most famous ruler was the monarch Ashoka, who was the grandson of the first emperor, Chandragupta. Its trading network was vast, trading with the Hellenists, Central and Southeast Asia, and more. After Ashoka died, though, the empire slowly declined with infighting and disputes being more common. Buddhism flourished in the empire and spread across it widely when Ashoka converted to it. The empire also had more religions as well, including Brahmanism, which is an early form of Hinduism, Jainism, and other indigenous belief systems to the Indian subcontinent. This period in India in history is significant as it is well known for its territorial expansion, cultural achievements, and more. Now, on to the last entry for Tier 4. The Indus Valley Civilization was an ancient civilization in the Indus Valley, of course, which is in present-day India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. The civilization lasted from around 2600 BC to 1900 BC and was basically in the middle of the Bronze Age. The civilization is notable for their ability to build pretty respectable sized cities with well thought out planning and execution. They had a writing system that still remains unsolved to modern day scholars and they also left behind many artifacts of jewelry, pottery, etc. The decline of civilization is also not well known as there are theories of trade changing, conflict, climate changing, and more. The civilization shows what earlier humans were able to accomplish when it comes to building centers, trade routes, and everyday items. And there wraps up tier four. Starting tier five, we have Lakia. Wallachia is a historical region in what is now present-day Romania. It is bordered by the Carpathian Mountains to its north and to the south the Danube. Once being an area ruled by Rome known as Dacia, it emerged under the suzerainty of other medieval kingdoms slash empires like Hungary and the Ottomans. It is probably most known for Vlad the Impaler, the ruler who would impale his enemies on log wooden stakes to intimidate them. It was under the dominion of the Ottoman Empire for centuries, but would often rebel against them to try and preserve their own aut autonomy. Wallachia emerged with Moldova in the middle of the 1800s and formed the state of Romania. The legacy of Wallachia left behind is significant because it played a crucial role in the country we know today as Romania and its founding. The Khmer Empire The Khmer Empire is a big and powerful empire of Southeast Asia, mainly in Cambodia, from the 9th to the 15th century AD. It was founded in 802 AD by Jaya Varman II, who declared himself the God King and founded the capital Angkor. The empire practiced Hinduism, which over time developed into its own form of Mahayana Buddhism, though both religions existed within the empire peacefully. With the empire having a complex irrigation system, the empire was built around agricultural. Trading with other regions around them, invasions by the Vietnamese and the Thai led to its downfall, but it also faced internal struggle and trade route changes toward the end as well. The Empire of Brazil was an empire from 1822 to 1889. It was formed when Brazil gained its independence from Portugal and formed its own monarchy. Being ruled by Pedro I and later by his son Pedro II, the monarchy evolved over time evolving into a constitutional one by the end of the empire. The empire then and also now was the biggest country in South America. 
the empire abolished slavery in the country and a year before the end of the empire officially ended the practice. The country made a lot of money exporting coffee and farming, but that could not keep everything perfect as there were revolts and fights all around the country over time in different regions. Eventually over time, with growing discontent, Pedro II was overthrown and the monarchy was abolished, the country then becoming the Republic of Brazil, which it still is today. Norte Chico Norte Chico is a civilization in modern-day Peru. The civilization lasted from around 3000 BC to 1800 BC. The ancient coastal civilization was widespread and complex, forming one of the first known cities and urban centers in the Americas. The Norte Chico civilization was able to have complex urban planning and was able to build huge monumental architecture as well. There is limited evidence of conflicts in the civilization with the lack of relics that have been found or excavated, though undoubtedly as humans they engaged in some type of conflict, though the evidence suggests it was a relatively peaceful civilization. There is also no clear reason as to why the civilization vanished, though as with all ancient civilizations, the usual suspects are climate, fighting, trade, etc. The civilization is important in the study of pre-Columbian North and South America. Gran Colombia was a republic that gained its independence from Spain on the 17th of December 1819 when the forces led by Simón Bolívar defeated the Spanish royalist forces at the Battle of Boyaca. The republic was officially founded in 1821 though with the constitution of Cucuta. The government leaders wanted to take more secular ways away from Catholicism, but still the majority religion of the Republic was overwhelmingly Catholic, and it led to a bit of tension and conflict inside the territory. The Republic did a lot of fighting, and a lot of fighting amongst itself, like, like a civil war where supporters of Bolivar and Francisco de Paula Santander clashed. The Republic could not stand the sustained and prolonged conflict with itself and its neighbors, and eventually dissolved in 1830. With the dissolution, three countries emerged, Colombia of course, Venezuela, and Ecuador. The legacy left behind is still evident in the upper South American countries today. The Empire of Mali was an empire in the west of Africa from 1226 to 1670. The empire was established when Sundaeta Keita won a victory over the Soso king Sumaro Kante. The empire became a major center of trade, essentially being the middleman between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. The city of Timbuktu emerged as a great city during the empire as well. Of course, you cannot really talk about the empire without mentioning Mansa Musa, the supposed richest man to ever live, though there are conflicting arguments for and against that, but it is true that the empire reached its greatest peak under his rule. The religion of the empire was Islam, and Mansa Musa himself made a pilgrimage to Mecca and caused inflation where he ventured. Over time, the empire weakened though, other trade routes emerged, wars were fought and lost, and their monopoly over the trades in those areas waned. Eventually, the empire fell in 1670. The Angevin Empire was the empire whose territories covered England and sections of France in the 12th and 13th centuries. The Plantagenet kings and queens ruled this empire and it was founded by Henry II in 1154 when he took the throne and proceeded to strategically marry and acquire territories in France. The empire included regions of France such as Normandy, Aquitaine, Gascony, and more. After Henry, his successors expanded and consolidated more territory in France, such as Richard the Lionheart, who spent a great deal of time away from England and in France, and also King John. These expansions frequently caused conflict with the French monarchs as well, and under King John, the Angevins lost Normandy. After conflicts involving King John, revolts, and France, the English by the 13th century lost its vast expanses in France, and eventually, later on, lost it all there. The Emirate of Gnatha was the last Muslim holdout in the Iberian Peninsula. Established by Muhammad I in 1238, he founded the Nazareth dynasty as well. The Emirate emerged as the Almohad Caliphate fell and collapsed. The Emirate became a vassal state of Spain and remained in the south of Spain for some time. They had truces with Spain, though there was fighting that did break out occasionally. The Reconquista was launched to kick the Muslim invaders out of Spain, and eventually the last stronghold came to be Granada. In 1492, the Reconquista was complete. And over time, the Muslims in Granada left, and many ventured back to North Africa, though some stayed and converted to Catholicism, becoming Moriscos. After the fall, Spain was able to focus on new things and set their sights westward, over the seas, beginning the, an empire in the New World. Now, for the final entry on Tier 5. The Parthian Empire was founded by Arsaces I in 247 BC. He was the local ruler of Parthia and rebelled against the Seleucid Empire. 
The empire was situated in ancient Persia, including locations in modern-day Iran, Iraq, Armenia, and more. The Parthians were known for their skilled cavalry, particularly the cataphracts, which are heavily armored cavalry, and their expertise in mounted archery. They engaged in frequent conflicts with the Roman Republic and later the Roman Empire, established a series of intermittent wars known as the Roman Parthian Wars. Over time, with wars and conflict, with Rome and the Sasanians and nomadic invasions, the empire fell and dissolved. The Sasanian king, Ardashir I, defeated the last Parthian king, Artabanus IV, and the empire fell in 224 AD. Beginning tier 6, we have the Neo-Sumerian Empire. The Neo-Sumerian Empire refers to the time in ancient Mesopotamian history when the Sumerians ruled again after the Akkadian Empire fell. The empire lasted from around 2100 BC to around 2000 BC. The third dynasty of Ur, led by Ur-Namu and later his son Shulgi, established the Neo-Sumerian Empire. The capital of this empire was Ur, a prominent city-state in ancient Sumer. The Neo-Sumerian Empire eventually faced internal and external challenges. The Gudian people, a mountainous people from the Zagros Mountains, invaded Mesopotamia, leading to the fall of the third dynasty of Ur, the end of the Neo-Sumerians. It left a lasting impact on Mesopotamia, even though it was a short-lived empire. The Tibetan Empire, ruled by the Yarlung Dynasty, was a powerful empire in the 7th to 9th centuries that emerged in Asia. Founded by Songsten Gampo in the 7th century, he united various tribes to form under him and he became their first emperor. The empire expanded and included parts of India, western China, and other parts of Central Asia. The empire played a huge role in spreading Buddhism in the region. Their first emperor, Songsten, is credited with spreading the religion to Tibet. Facing invasions and wars, especially from the Tang Dynasty in China during the 9th century, the empire fragmented and eventually fell. The empire had a lasting legacy, especially in regard to the spread of Buddhism in and around Central Asia. The Grand Duchy of Muscovy was the precursor to what would become the Tsardom of Russia. The Grand Duchy emerged in the late medieval period of Russia as a result of the consolidation of power by Ivan III, also known as Ivan the Great. This duchy expanded and took control of various territories, laying the groundwork for the future Russian state. Ivan IV, or the Terrible, oversaw more expansion of the Grand Duchy and created the Tsardom of Russia. That marked the transition of the Grand Duchy into a more formalized state. Also, P.S., I recommend the book called Ivan the Terrible by Robert Payne. It's very good. But the Orthodox Church became hugely prominent during this period, and Russia became essentially the center for it. The duchy transformed over time and set the groundwork for the whole future of Russia as we know it today. Dacia Dacia was a region of old Eastern Europe that is now mainly Romania and Moldova. Dacia was situated between the Danube River to the south, the Carpathian Mountains to the west and north, and the Prut River to the east. It was a crossroads for many ancient civilizations when it came to trading, wars, etc. The people native to the region, the Dacians, were a group of people who were conquered by the Romans, though they engaged in trade, mining, etc. In the 3rd century AD, the Roman Dacia was abandoned and gradually assimilated with the surrounding cultures of the region. Qin China The Qin Dynasty of China was the first imperial dynasty of ancient China. The empire and the dynasty of the Qin lasted from 221 BC to just 206 BC. The dynasty was a super short but also very impactful one in the history of China. The dynasty was the bridge between the Warring States period of China and the Imperial period. The harsh ruler, Qin Shi Huang, was the first ruler and started the construction of the Great Wall of China. The Terracotta Army was also made during his reign as well. The harsh rule he had led to huge discontent and after his death, eventually rebellion. After this dynasty, the Han Dynasty reigned over China. Mercia was an ancient Anglo-Saxon kingdom in early medieval England. The territory and kingdom was founded in the 6th century in the central part of England. The kingdom was known for sub-kingdom type things called shires, which were ruled by smaller noblemen. The kingdom was relatively powerful and ruled by notable kings like King Penda and King Offa, and during Offa's reign it was at its height of power. Viking invasions and struggles for power eventually led to its downfall. The great heathen army of the Vikings ruled over Mercia as well in the 9th century. In the 10th century, the Kingdom of Mercia merged and formed with others to form the United Kingdom of England. The Timurid Empire was an empire from 1370 to 1507. The empire was founded by Tamerlane, the Turco-Mongol conqueror. 
He rose to power through conquest in Central Asia. The empire was big at its height and covered parts of India, including Persian sections and Anatolia. Tamerlan and his successors were lovers of the arts and influenced many artworks to be built, painted, etc. It led to the Timurid Renaissance and a period of beautiful art emerged. After King Timur's, aka Tamerlan's death, his sons took control and the empire was divided into parts. Over time though, new powers rose around them and challenged the empire's power, and over time the empire waned and fell in 1507. The Orange Free State, which is now the Free State Province in South Africa, was established in the middle of the 19th century in, of course, South Africa. It was initially founded by the Boer settlers of the region, who migrated from the south of South Africa from Cape Town, inland. They wanted to get away and go live a more rural and agrarian lifestyle. The region gained international recognition as an independent Boer Republic in 1854 after the signing of the Blomfontein Convention. With their distinct Dutch-influenced life and their Afrikaans language, they had a unique culture and lifestyle distinct from others, trying to keep their own unique culture, identity, and language in the region. The Orange Free State faced challenges during the late 19th century, including conflicts with indigenous people, particularly the Basotho and the Basutu Gun War, and also, after gold and diamonds were found in their land, the British and them warred in the Second Anglo-Boer War. In 1900, the British annexed the area, and in 1910, it became a part of the official South Africa. Now, for the last entry on Tier 6. The Kingdom of Numidia was an ancient kingdom in North Africa. It was founded in the 3rd century BC by the Masili and the Masaeslili tribal confederations, led by King Masinissa. The region of the kingdom is now in present-day Tunisia, Algeria, and Libya. During the Second Punic War between Carthage and Rome, the kingdom initially supported Carthage, but then turned around and allied with Rome. In 146, with the fall of Carthage, the kingdom then came to be a client kingdom to Rome, and then later on, after the Juggerthine War from 112 to 105 BC, the kingdom was annexed by Rome, and remained under its rule until the Western Roman Empire fell. Starting Tier 7, we have Tiwanaku. Tiwanaku is an ancient pre-Columbian civilization that was located near the southern shores of Lake Titicaca in present-day Bolivia. It was a powerful pre-Incan civilization in the area that was in the area from 200 BC to 1000 AD. The culture extended across much of South America, including parts in Bolivia, Peru, and Chile. With buildings like the Acapana Pyramid and more, it shows that they had a complex city building and infrastructure system. The civilization falling around 1000 AD is a mystery, but as with lots of unknown declines we have covered, it's the same reasons this time too, like climate, trade, war, etc. By the time the Incans came to power, their sites were long abandoned. The Srivijaya Empire was a strong naval slash maritime empire in Southeast Asia, mainly on the island of Sumatra, that emerged in the first few centuries AD. Believed to have started around the 600s, the empire reached its heights from the 8th to the 13th centuries. Its capital was located in present-day Indonesia, thought to be around Palembang. It controlled the waters of the area around Southeast Asia, allowing it to grow wealthy off trade and controlling waterways. Buddhism and Hinduism were big as well in the empire, being a center for Buddhism. Over the centuries, the empire began to weaken and eventually fell. The invasion of Rajendra Chola I of the Chola dynasty in South India is a key factor in its fall. The Kalmar Union was a political union that brought together the three kingdoms of Denmark, Sweden, and Norway under a single monarch. The union was formalized in 1397 in the city of Kalmar, Sweden, where the treaty was signed. The treaty was signed to bring the three kingdoms closer together in trade, defense, etc. Queen Margaret I of Denmark was his key figure at the start, and then later her son, who was adopted, became the ruling monarch, Eric of Pomerania. The Union was meant to counterbalance the Hanseatic League, a Germanic defensive and commercial confederation in the region of Northern Europe. In the early 1500s, though, the Union was unraveling, and in 1523, the Union dissolved, becoming no more. The Vandal Kingdom was a kingdom that was founded by Germanic peoples in North Africa during the later years of the Western Roman Empire. After crossing the Strait of Gibraltar in 429 AD, King Genseric formed his kingdom in North Africa with Carthage as the capital city. In 455, after coming into dispute with Rome, the Vandals, under King Genseric, sacked Rome. Genseric was an Arian Christian and implemented statutes against Nicene Christians. 
Arian Christians were a heretical group of Christians that went against Catholic Orthodox teachings in the early years of the church and can honestly have their own video. But anyway, the Vandals were a strong naval power in the Mediterranean. The Byzantine ruler Justinian I sought to reclaim the Vandal Kingdom for Rome, and in 533 AD, the Byzantine general Belisarius launched an expedition against the Vandals. Carthage fell to the Byzantines in 534, marking the end of the Vandal Kingdom. The Nabataean Kingdom was an ancient Arabian Kingdom that was around from the 4th century BC to the 2nd century AD. The kingdom emerged in the south of modern-day Jordan, the northwest of Saudi Arabia, and southern Israel, and spread from there. The capital city with its impressive rock-cut structures was Petra. The city was a major trading hub for the region and helped the kingdom grow rich. Under Roman Emperor Trajan, the kingdom fell under Roman rule and became the province of Arabian Petraea. The empire's work still attracts visitors and tourists today and reminds people of the rich kingdom and empire that was once there. Greco-Bactria Alexander the Great was making his way through most of the known world and conquering all he could. In 329, Alexander conquered the region of Bactria. In 323 BC, when Alexander died, his empire was divided up amongst his generals after some conflicts. Seleucus I of Nicator, who established the Seleucid Empire, came to then rule the region of Bactria. And later on, the Greco-Bactrian kingdom was founded by Diodotus I around 256 BC, as the Seleucid Empire's hold on the eastern territories weakened. The kingdom helped to spread Hellenistic culture in Asia. The empire spread and eventually bordered an empire we touched on earlier in the iceberg, the Mauryan Empire. Eventually, with the Parthian Empire cutting off their connections with Europe and the West, conflicts were their downfall. Invasions by the nomadic Yuezi people helped to accelerate the downfall and the kingdom was conquered around 130 BC by Indo-Iranian tribes. Even after the kingdom fell, the influence of Hellenistic culture remained, and still today there are people in the region with decidedly more Greek features than other surrounding peoples. The Pagan Kingdom, Pagan Dynasty, or Pagan Empire, was an empire that was located to the west of yet another Southeast Asian Empire that we touched on earlier, the Khmer Empire. The kingdom was around from 849 AD to 1297 AD and was founded by King Anurata I. And then it became a dominant power in the region, becoming a center for Theravada Buddhism, trade, religion, etc. The Mongols and their southward expansions conquered the territory and the kingdom and the empire fell. Marco Polo also likely went there when he was working for the Khan as sort of a tax collector person. The Khwarezmian Empire, also known as the Khwarezm Shatam, emerged in the 1100s in Central Asia. Anushtegan Garchai, the founder of the Shatam, established a dynasty in the region of Khwarezm, which is present-day Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and Iran. Notable about this empire was its conflict with the Mongols when they were being led by Genghis Khan. In the early 13th century, Genghis Khan sent emissaries to the Khwarezmian Shah, Muhammad II, seeking trade and diplomatic relations. However, the Shah's ill treatment of the emissaries led to a series of military campaigns by the Mongols. Genghis, and later his grandson, Hulugo, invaded the territory and sacked and destroyed a lot, leading to the empire's downfall in 1221. The empire, before it was destroyed, was a center for math, science, and the arts. The famous Al-Khwarizmi, considered the father of algebra, lived and worked in the empire. After the Mongol conquest, the region fell under Mongol rule and later became part of the largest Timurid empire. Gojoseon was an ancient Korean kingdom, considered to be one of the oldest Korean kingdoms, and according to legend, it was founded in 2333 BC by the legendary Dan Gun. The kingdom was in the Korean peninsula and reached into parts of Manchuria. The capital was apparently Mount Jaizu, but that is still debated today where the capital even was. During the Warring States period of Chinese history, this kingdom did extensive trade with them and was able to grow wealthy that way. In the 2nd century BC, after repeated invasions and conflicts, the kingdom fell and fragmented into multiple successor states. A lot we hear today about the kingdom is from legend and myth, but there is proof that some aspects of it were true. And that does it for Tier 7, and now on to Tier 8. Starting Tier 8, we have the Kingdom of Kush. The kingdom was located in Africa in the Nile Valley in what is now Sudan. Following the collapse of the New Kingdom of Egypt, the Kingdom of Kush was able to form and become powerful in the south in 1070 BC. Trading with its northern neighbor Egypt, it would also war with them as well. And this kingdom was known for at one point ruling over the entirety of Egypt. 
In 300 BC, the kingdom fought with the Assyrians and moved its capital from Napata to Meroe, starting the Meroitic period of the kingdom. In the 4th century AD, the kingdom lost its independence and became ruled by the kingdom of Aksum. The Xiongnu Confederacy was an Asian steppe nomadic group that emerged in the late 3rd century. The confederacy was formed by a supreme ruler at the top, with a bunch of chieftains of, a, of other tribes following under the supreme leader. They are notable for their conflicts with, the, with their southern neighbors, Han China, and over time the confederation had infighting and other conflicts with other nomadic tribes, and it weakened their structure, eventually leading to the dissolving of the confederacy. The nomadic horse archers left a lasting legacy though, because they influenced the building of the Great Wall of China. The Khazar Khaganate was a semi-nomadic Turkic Khaganate that existed in Central Asia with the air, within the area between the Caspian and the Black Sea being its borders. The Khaganate was a tripartite with three groups of people being the ruling elites, the Khazars, who were Turkic-speaking, and two other groups of Turkic people, the Bulgars and the Sabirs. Their territory was in the middle of major trade routes, allowing them to grow vast amounts of wealth. The territory was religiously diverse, too, with Judaism being the state religion, but also including many Christians and Muslims, too, with the elite worshipping a Turkic shamanism. Facing pressures from the expanding Rus, the Byzantines, and the Kievan Rus, the Khaganite quietly fell over time, with an exact date being unknown. The Durrani Empire was an empire that emerged in 1747 and, and was founded by Ahmad Shah, a Pashtun military commander. The empire was situated around the region of where Afghanistan is today, though it included parts of Pakistan, India, and more. They were a diverse empire ethnically and frequently fought amongst themselves, though eventually they fought with the British as well and became a buffer state between British India and the Russian Empire to the north. The empire laid the groundwork for modern Afghanistan today, but the empire itself could not survive through the late 1800s and fell. Elam was an ancient civilization that existed in what is now Iran. The civilization has roots that date back to the 4th millennium BC, though it can also be traced back to the 1st millennium BC as well. The civilization was not an empire all the time really, but was a conglomeration of city-states in the area. The civilization traded with ancient Sumer and Akkad as well, though they warred with them occasionally too. Over time, Elam was ruled by a king or kings and became a kingdom, though at other times it was city-states like we touched on. Cyrus the Great of the Persian Empire, who we also talked about too, conquered the land, and Elam then became a part of that empire. Machnashina refers to the movement led by Nestor Machno during the Russian Civil War of 1918 to 1922. He was an anarchist revolutionary who led the movement in Ukraine. His aims were to establish anarchy in Ukraine, free from both the Red and the White armies. The movement opposed centralized power while wanting socialized libertarianism. His army was known as the Black Army, though they initially had some alliance with the Reds, over time they drifted further apart due to ideological differences. The movement had success at first in a small area of Ukraine, but eventually, when the communists took over, they oppressed the movement and Makhno went into exile, living in many different countries, and the movement faltered out. Cahokia was an ancient American Indian city located in present-day Illinois, near the Mississippi, the Missouri, and the Illinois rivers. The city was thriving from the 9th to the 14th centuries and was one of the most significant pre-Columbian North American works. The city and culture were mound builders, where they would build large earthen mounds and Monk's Mound as the largest earthwork in pre-Columbian America. The population was thought to be around 10 to 20,000 at its peak and functioned as a trade hub for many native tribes. By the 13th century, the city was in decline for unsure reasons, but by the 14th, it was gone, though remains can still be found today there. Great Moravia was a Slavic state that emerged in the 9th century in Central Europe, roughly in the area of the present-day Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, and Austria. Founded by Mojmir I in the early 9th century, it played a huge role in Christianizing the pagan Slavic people of Europe. They were pretty good allies with the Byzantines to the south, who sent Christian missionaries to initially start the Christianization. They also had relations with the Franks as well to the west, though that was a bit more tense at times. External pressures like the Magyar invasion contributed to the decline of Moravia, and the Battle of Bratislava in 907 is essentially a turning point in the decline of the empire. Overall, the empire was short-lived, lasting from 833 to 907 AD. Urartu 
was an ancient kingdom in the Armenian highlands, including parts of Turkey and Iran, and of course, parts of Armenia too. The kingdom was around from 860 to 590 BC and flourished along with other existing empires at first, like the Neo-Syrian Empire. The decline of Urartu is attributed to a combination of factors, including invasions by the Scythians, Sumerians, and the expanding Neo-Syrian Empire. The Assyrians eventually conquered the Urartan capital, Tushpa, in the 7th century BC. Now, for the last entry on Tier 8, the Icelandic Commonwealth. The Commonwealth was founded when Norse and Celtic people started settling the island of Iceland in the 10th and 11th centuries. Settlers were primarily from Norway, though. The rule on the island was divided up and given to chieftains of specific areas, and also included something called an all-thing, where men would meet up to discuss disputes, laws, etc. Over time, as well, the island was Christianized too, but since the island was not ruled by one single person, the rate for it in different areas was not the same. Over time, the influence of the Norwegian kings was felt, and the Commonwealth eventually dissolved, and in 1262 AD, the island was united with Norway. Eventually, it was part of the Kalmar Union, which we covered a few tiers up on this iceberg too. Now, for the first entry on Tier 9, we have Colchis. Colchis was an ancient region that was located on the Black Sea and is in present-day Georgia. Colchis is largely known because in Greek mythology it is the destination for Jason and the Argonauts in their quest for the Golden Fleece. The Greeks had a big influence on the region and along with the Caucasian people of the region, trade developed. During the Greco-Persian Wars, the region came under the rule of the Archimedes Empire and the region allied with Persia. Later on, the region was then ruled by Rome, and then again later, Christianity spread in the region and the Byzantines ruled there too. All the people ruling there helped shape modern day Georgia as we know it today. The medieval kingdom of Dyfed was initially an independent Welsh kingdom that emerged in the 5th century. It was located in southwestern Wales, encompassing areas of Pembrokeshire, Carmarthenshire, and Ceredigion. In the 9th century, it was incorporated into a larger Welsh kingdom, Dehubarth. Over time, the Normans came there and began conquering the area. The kingdom left a lasting picture of what a blend of Celtic and Norman culture looked like. The kingdom, after being incorporated into larger ones, was eventually ruled by the Normans in the late 10 hundreds, and by the 1530s and 40s, the Acts of Union firmly placed the region under the royal governance of the crown. Nan Madal is an archaeological site that is located in Micronesia on the island of Pompeii. It is not an empire civilization, but a giant work. It's located on many artificial islets and is made up of coral and basalt platforms. It was constructed during the Sauda Lur dynasty dating back to around the 8th or 9th century, and it was a significant structure for politics and ceremony until the 1600s. Some of the stones that comprise it weigh up to 50 tons and it is a complex and large building. The building that is significant in Micronesian folklore, though, was abandoned in the 1600s, and no one is exactly sure why. Though today, it is frequently visited by tourists and is a World Heritage Site. I'm like 99% sure this one's talking about the Armenian Kingdom of Cilicia, not Cecilia, as it's spelled. But anyway, the kingdom was situated in what is now modern-day Turkey in the region of Cilicia. It was founded in 1080 AD when the Armenians were fleeing the Seljuk Turk invasions of Armenia. It was founded by the Rubidid dynasty, and then later was ruled by the Hethmids, and then later the Luzenians, the dynasty famous for crusading and for the man named Guy de Luzenian. Speaking of crusades, the kingdom formed alliances with many crusader armies and battled Muslims side by side with the Christians. A crossroads of east and west, and showing it in its culture and religion, the religion mainly Eastern Christianity, did have tensions with Catholicism, since it was from the west, and the schisms and whatnot. But anyway, later on, the kingdom experienced Mongol invasions and even allied with them as well. The Mamluks and their rise to power threatened the kingdom, and in 1375 AD, the kingdom fell to them. The kingdom left many lasting legacies to this day in and around Armenia, with churches, sites, etc. The Rukyu kingdom was a kingdom formed in the 14th century in the Pacific on, of course, the Rukyu Islands. They stretched essentially from Kyushu to Taiwan. It was formed when three principalities came together, the Nanzan, Chuzan, and Hokuzan. The kingdom did extensive maritime trade with China, Japan, the Philippines, and more, all up and down the Asian Pacific coasts and islands. The kingdom was influenced by Chinese Confucianism and Buddhism, but also had shamanistic beliefs indigenous to the area. In the beginning, it paid tribute to the Chinese dynasties, and over time, by the 17th century, 
they felt increasing influence from the Satsuma domain from Japan. In 1609, it was invaded, but Japan allowed it to keep its monarch as a ceremonial head as long as it paid tribute to the Satsuma domain and China. In 1872, the Empire of Japan officially took control of the kingdom, and a couple years later, the monarchy was officially abolished. Later on, the islands felt significant destruction from World War II, and from 1945 to 72, it was under American domain until it was returned to Japan. The first Elbaite Kingdom, um, I'm not totally sure what this is as I couldn't find anything by that name and the first search result is Elam, which we already covered, but I'm assuming it is referring to Elba and how Napoleon was given rule of the island after his first exile, after his defeat at the Battle of Leipzig. Uh, Napoleon was actually able to run the island pretty efficiently and built improvements on it as well. He later escaped the island and returned to France to rule again for a few months until Waterloo. I recommend the book Napoleon A Life by Andrew Roberts. It's seriously an amazing book and the only reason I was able to possibly link this entry to that. Uh, I'm not 100% sure this entry is what I talked about, but I can only assume that's true. I did more research into the Elbaite thing and it's actually supposed to be spelled Eblaite. The iceberg spelled it wrong, so that's why I couldn't find anything. But it's just a ancient Bronze Age civilization in what is now modern day Syria. There's not much info on it, but still pretty cool if you want to look into it. Great Old Bulgaria, or just known as Great Bulgaria too, was established in the 7th century AD by Khan Kubrat, a Bulgar leader. It was situated in modern day Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and Russia. It was a confederation of Turkic and Bulgar tribes of the region had relations with the Byzantines, both good and bad, and they did war occasionally. And in 1864 or 65, Khan Boris I adopted Christianity, and soon after, the Confederation was also Christian. After the initial Khan's death, tensions rose and the Confederation was looser and looser, and tribes broke apart and moved, like the Volga Bulgars, moving to, of course, the Volga region. Great Bulgaria was an early Eurasian state and influenced many around them and later on, like the Bulgarian Empire. Not much is known directly from the Bulgars, but more so, second-hand information was passed down by things like the Byzantines and their accounts of them and the like. The Kushan Empire was an empire that was around from the 1st to the 3rd centuries AD in Central Asia and the Indian subcontinent. It likely came from the Uezi people, which we briefly mentioned in the above tiers. It was in a good area as well, because it was along the Silk Road, making it able to go rich off trade routes to the Middle East and Europe from Asia. It is known for its art, known as Gandharan, which fused Hellenistic, Persian, and Indian art together. Buddhism flourished in the empire, but by the 3rd century, other nomadic tribes were threatening it, and it fell around 375. The remnants of Kushan culture under the Kadarites, people who ruled the region of Bactria we talked about, in the northwest were ultimately wiped out in the end of the 5th century by the invasions of the Alchon Huns and later the Nazak Huns. Much of what we know about this empire also comes from other sources besides itself. The Tondo Kingdom existed in the northern section of the Philippines and it existed during the pre-colonial era before Spain became rulers of the island. It was a trade hub connecting large parts of Southeast Asia with the rest of Eastern Asia as well. As with many societies, it had a hierarchical structure with a ruling elite at the top known as the Lacan or Raja. Much of what we know about their culture comes from Spanish accounts of what they were like. It is an important part of Filipino history, but there seems to be a lack of information that lets the world know much more about it. The Republic of Formosa was established on May 23, 1895. It was a response to the Treaty of Shimonoseki, which ceded Taiwan from Qing Dynasty China to the Empire of Japan. After it did this, it faced basically instantaneous response from Japan who wanted to control it. It fought Japan, but was really no match. It only lasted for a couple months from May 23, 1895 to October 21, 1895. When Japanese forces established control over Taiwan, most countries never recognized it in its short life. In the country of Taiwan today, it remains a symbol of resistance to outside power. The Wari Empire was an empire that was pre-Incan in Peru from around 500 to 1000 AD. It engaged in terrace farming and built big megalithic structures and kind of laid the framework for the Incas. It had wide trade routes as well, reaching all the way into the Amazon basin. 
Again, with New World and pre-colonial empires, their history was never written down, so it's hard to know their exact dates, when they rose and fell, and also why they fell. It's likely it has to be the usual culprits that are always brought up, like famine, climate, war, etc. The Kanem Empire was an empire that was in Africa, centered around Lake Chad, encompassing parts of present-day Chad, Niger, Nigeria, Cameroon, and Sudan. Founded in the 8th century AD by local chieftains who were consolidated by the Kanembu people, it was a relatively strong empire that engaged in trade in the area surrounding it. After the 11th century, it became Muslim after Arab power moved south in Africa. In the 16th century, under their Mai, or king, Idris Aloma, it was able to reach its peak strength by expanding borders and military might. Over time, the Kanembu control weakened and they moved the capital to Borno and formed the Kanem Borno Empire. The Kanuri people of the region today are descendants of the empire, and they still reside there. And that does it for tier 9, and now we move on to the final tier, tier 10. The Republic of Sonora is a relatively unknown story regarding Mexico. It existed in 1853 when Mexico was going through major upheaval and change, which resulted in regional autonomy. The Republic emerged in opposition to the centralist government of Mexico during the period. On December 14th of 1853, it declared its independence from Mexico and Jose Maria Gonzalez de Hermosillo, a military officer, was appointed as the provisional president of the Republic of Sonora. The Republic of Sonora's existence was short-lived, lasting only a few weeks. By early 1854, the Mexican central government reasserted control over the region. This time period of Mexican history is marked by stories of upheaval and change and just general conflict of how Mexico should be. The Central African Empire was established in 1976 when the then president of the Central African Republic, Sean Bedel Bokasa, declared himself emperor of Central Africa. Before he declared himself emperor, however, he came to power in the republic by a military coup in 66. His rule, where he tried to have close ties with France, was marked, pretty unsurprisingly, by human rights abuses, corruption, etc. In 79, his regime faced a coup backed by France, and the republic was restored, and Bokasa went into exile in France. He was eventually able to return to the Republic and did some prison time there, eventually passing away there in 1996. The short-lived empire was known for all sorts of problems and still leaves a stain on the Central African Republic today. JAXA refers to a former microstate that existed in Northern Asia between the Sardom of Russia and Qing Dynasty China from 1665 to 1674. The population of the state was made of Polish and Ukrainian refugees and also the native people of the area, the Evenks and the Duars. The state was founded by a Pole, Nikifor Chernogovsky, who was exiled to the area after trying and failing to run away from the Sardom. He was exiled and tried running away because he killed a Vavad, which is essentially a military officer for R-wording his daughter. In Albazin, the region he was in, he rallied the refugees and the Tunguskic natives and formed his own microstate and built a wooden fort called Jaxa over the ruins of Albazino which was previously destroyed by Chinese troops. The Russians and Chinese got into wars during this period and tried taking the region, but neither could at first, all other surrounding forts being destroyed by the Chinese. Eventually, to oversimplify, negotiations and treaties were made and the area eventually became part of both modern-day China and modern-day Russia. Jeltuga, or the Jeltuga Republic. In 1883, gold was found by the Amur River in China. This led to many Russian and also some Chinese miners going to the region and, and setting up shop there. Eventually, the population that was settled on Qing Dynasty Chinese territory reached a population of approximately 12,000 gold prospectors. The area was a hotbed not just for miners, but also for criminals, escaped convicts, old believers, a group of Orthodox Christians that, honestly, I might make a video on because it was cool to talk about and their story is interesting, and more people. The whole topic of Jeltenga could get a full-length video, but anyway, for most of its existence, the Chinese government did not even know about it, and the Russians refused to acknowledge it even existed. Eventually, the Chinese government found out and warned the Tsar to get the Russians out of the area. They initially didn't leave, and the Chinese army later went to the area, deported the Russians to keep relations decent, and dispersed others or killed them, and then burned the area to the ground so no more could settle there. Other attempts by Russians were made to mine gold around the area, but they failed, and the Chinese moved to other places to mine gold. All in all, the unrecognized republic lasted from 1883 to just 1886, only three years. 
The Republic of Pirates, or the Pirate Republic, was a confederation of pirate bands that existed in the West Indies during the Golden Age of Piracy, which was from the late 17th century to the early 18th century. The location of the Republic was centered around the Bahamas because the whole region served as a good center and base for pirate activities in the Atlantic and the Caribbean. The pirates, notable ones being Calico Jack and of course Blackbeard, targeted merchant ships mainly, and some naval ones, in search for treasure and money. Over time, the Republic could not withstand prolonged targeting by the British Royal Navy, and eventually the Republic disbanded after crackdowns and arrests of prominent key pirates. The Loose Republic and Confederation lasted from 1706 to just 1718. Paulette's Hawaii, or more commonly known as British Hawaii during the Paulette Affair, was the occupation of Hawaii for five months by the British under Lord George Paulette. The island occupation lasted for a brief few months in 1843. Previously, Hawaii was ruled by King Kamehameha III, but economic interests led Britain and France and more to establish presence on the islands. In February of 43, Paulette came to the islands and laid claim that they were belonging to Britain now. The King of Hawaii decided not to resist due to fear of bloodshed, hoping diplomacy would work better. Once news reached England, though, the public disapproved and the UK government disavowed Lord Paulette's actions. Months later, Admiral Richard Darton Thomas arrived in July of 1843 and restored the Kingdom of Hawaii. July 31st of that year was celebrated as Restoration Day. The five months they did not have control of the islands was a warning that other powers could control Hawaii, and eventually, in the future, as we all know, they did. Talianki refers to an archaeological site that is located in Ukraine. It is named after a local village of the same name in Cherkasy Oblast, Ukraine. It was the location of a large Kukutani Tripilian settlement dating to around 3850 to 3700 BC, currently the largest known settlement in Neolithic Europe. On top of this site, there are remnants of a Yamnaya culture who also inhabited the region. They were a culture dating from the late Copper to early Bronze Age and covered large parts of Eastern Europe. The Yamnaya buried dead in simple pits, it's where they got their name and the pits have been found here as well. The site was discovered by a pilot in his free time in the 70s, and over the years more excavations have been done, revealing houses with two stories and more evidence of decently complex planning. At its height, it may have been able to house anywhere from 6-ish thousand to around 15,000 inhabitants, with surrounding other towns adding a population that could maybe reach to around 25 to 30,000. The decline, like many other very old sites, is unknown, but probably due to similar factors as others talked about. The Republic of Indian River, or the Republic of Indian Stream, was an unrecognized republic in between the borders of Canada and New Hampshire. It existed from July 9, 1832 to August 5, 1835. It was named for the river in the area. The region was able to exist because the territory was in an ambiguous scenario between the borders of Canada and the U.S., they were not super firmly in place at the time. The area was settled by European settlers who got it through a land grant from King Philip, an Abenaki man named after Metacomet who was also called King Philip. Over the years, feuds in the area and with New Hampshire were raising the US and British tension between each other. And both sides, not wanting war, drew up treaties and set the boundary in place with the Republic being absorbed into New Hampshire and is now known as Pittsburgh, a different one than the city in Pennsylvania. For the last entry, which is not on this iceberg, but is something I'm including because it's interesting and I want to make a video that is longer on it in the future, is the realm or kingdom of Presser John. Presser John was a fabled Christian figure that was supposed to exist to the far east of Europe in the Orient. He commanded a rich empire and huge armies that would eventually come to the aid of Christendom to help fight the Saracens in the Middle East and let Christianity rule everywhere. In the area of the Crusades around 1165, the letter was apparently delivered to the Pope and spread through Europe from this prester, claiming that a vast and rich Christian kingdom existed to the east of the pagans and Muslims. The Pope sent a physician named Philip east, but no more was ever heard from Philip. Prester John, though, he was claimed to reside in India, and back then, India wasn't what we know it today. It was a term referring to areas of Asia, and there were greater and lesser Indias as well. There were Christians in the east, however, known as Nestorian Christians, but there was never a Prester John who ruled them, who would come to the aid of the Crusaders. People traveled east in search of him, but were never able to find him. Eventually, the Portuguese, some hundreds of years later, sailed around Africa and into Ethiopia, 
and into the modern day landmass of India. There were Christians in Ethiopia and the Portuguese did call their king Presser John, even though he had no clue what they were talking about. And there were also Christians in India from when St. Thomas traveled there after Jesus. Though neither group were the Christians of Presser John, not the Nestorians, not the Ethiopians, and not the Indians. And even later in the New World, when in the Americas, there's no Presser John there either, even though there were stories of him. The story of Presser John gave Europe a hope during the Crusades and eras later on, which were times of often bleakness and despair. I recommend the book The Realm of Presser John by Robert Silverberg. It is honestly amazing and jam-packed with amazing details. But yeah, that about does it for this iceberg video, and my first real video at that. If you made it to the end and watched all 85 or so entries, thank you. I appreciate it. I know I'm not a pro YouTuber by any means, and I'm no Wendigoon or anyone like that, but I had fun making this, and hope whoever watches this also enjoyed it. If you want to like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it, though if not, that's cool too. If any of you want to see more in-depth videos about certain entries, you can leave a comment about it, or really any video idea you want to hear. Also, if I did get anything wrong, please feel more than free to correct me. It's all good, and I plan to make more videos about stuff that I find cool. Like more obscure history stuff, maybe more icebergs, conspiracies. Though not about super big ones. I like the theories about history and Earth and all that. My favorite story is Presser John, which I mentioned. Um, it's a cool topic. Uh, but I also like stories like the mud flood, Tartaria, time skips, date fabrications, etc. Even if I don't believe any of them, or some of them, they're still cool to talk about and share. But that's enough rambling. Thanks again. I will hopefully make more videos soon. I found this iceberg on TikTok and I have zero clue who made it, but if whoever made this sees this, you can let me know and I'll be more than happy to credit you. But thank you for watching.